Hey team, Luigi Mondelli here. Um, this is uh, our weekly talk. Actually, Luna Mondelli here too. Um, I'm moving the videos from Facebook groups, from American Top Team Connecticut groups, and from uh, the Core BJJ Around the World uh, groups group to YouTube just because we have some students, some teammates that are not on Facebook or they haven't found yet the American Top Team Connecticut group or the core BJJ around the world group. So this way it's for me, uh, it's easier for me to reach out to everyone. Um, I like to have this quick conversation open channel with all my students and the students of my students and friends and you know, maybe even like other people from other schools might get that um, some good information or critique or maybe give some feedback that can be helpful to all of us. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody that helped me during the, um, my own training last uh, week. I spent um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday training with Bill Raper, who is a third degree Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt under Gustavo Machado from uh, Virginia Beach, originally from Brazil. Um, but he teaches in Virginia Beach. Amazing guy. If you guys ever in that area, look it up. Uh, Gustavo Machado BJJ. He was Bill's uh, coach for all Bill's uh, life in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. He's still his coach. And Bill is also a 20 year Navy SEAL veteran. He was part of the elite in the Navy SEAL, the elite group in the Navy SEAL. Very, um, of course, experienced. Um, veteran and 20 years as a Navy SEAL is it's a pretty big deal also he um, he's very good in masters Muay Thai and uh, Sayak too which is um, pretty much all the blades and all the techniques so the message this week is um, so let me go back so during this five days of training um, with Bill we trained a lot of uh, combatives um, self-defense with and without weapons, but I guess the biggest part is the mindset talk. And um, Bill, he always mentioned the people that inspired his mindset talk. I always, I have my own mindset talk previously from my experience training with Wal Isaac, with Dennis Hill and many other guys from our own team. And then I start training with these other guys um, such as Bill Rapier, Kyle DeFour, and they love their mindset as well because they bring different uh, concepts. So, doing uh, at least like three mindset talks that um, I was fortunate to to listen to and to be part of as as a uh, spectator with Bill. He used a very simple sentence that it makes such a uh, amazing sense, which is training is the way. And this sounds very cliche or very common, but the truth is we can only achieve some proficiency and most of all, unconscious competence, which is the last level of, in, within the four levels of competence, if we keep um, a consistency in training, right? Which include, of course, the practice of techniques uh, the practice of uh, learning the techniques, drilling the techniques, and applying the techniques. So, w where in, in many um, wrestling rooms they, they split in three areas, three areas, which is introduction, isolation, and integration. Um, it's the same idea. So, if we talk about the four levels of competence, we start with unconscious incompetence when we don't know how bad we suck until we try to perform in anything right so it could be somebody that uh, never played drums and think that we have an idea how to play drums by the way i'm getting back into playing drums because it's a great hobby for me and it helped me to um get my mind out of the world and focus on something in living in the moment especially but you never play drums and then you sit on a, you know on a, on a on the drums and, and uh, you know and you start trying to just have a basic beat and then you go wow I really cannot do this right so you become consciously incompetent you don't know how bad you are until you really try something you could be somebody watching a grappling class and look at it and go oh it's easy for me and um, as soon as they try 
oh my god you know you could be like an experienced uh, brazilian jiu-jitsu person that is looking at technique which it could be a more elaborated technique okay i hold here i hold there but watching the coach or you know whoever's teaching and when that person tries to apply just practicing the drill you're like you're using the wrong arm or just moving your hips the wrong way and then you realize that you don't have the competence to perform that uh, specific move it could be firearms you go there you think like it's easy to get a target to get a, a drill um, to meet the expectations of the drill and then you see that you don't have the technique yet then at the third level we um, we practice and we try to as much as we can um, go through the moves that's pretty much the, the, when we're trying to isolate, right? So we're trying to uh, learn the moves, learn the steps, and you're consciously talking to yourself. I'm gonna hold here, I'm gonna hold there, or just you know, mentally talking to yourself. I will now from here, I'm gonna do this and that. So you become conscious, competent, because you have to put you know, more effort thinking um, until at some point you're just doing things by heart or just like, you know, I'm con you don't even think too much it just becomes second nature which some people in a wrong way says uh that is muscle memory but like chris graney explained to us chris graney is one of my black belts he's a master in biomechanics really like um a really the scientist of human body let's say he uh, he always explained you, you're trying to develop the right muscle skills which is the ability for what i understood that might be wrong is our ability to uh, engage the most efficient neural pathways, muscular neural pathways, to do a, a specific exercise or movement or motion, etc. So I guess that's what muscle skills uh, pretty much represents. Or you know, if you want to call it muscle memory, whatever. What you really we're looking for is unconscious competence. But you only can achieve unconscious competence, in my opinion, is through. A consistent training so training is the way so some people really don't don't balance well the training they come for a week in whatever they're doing um, and um, I'm gonna give a few examples but say in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu they come five days a week and then they train super strong super hard and then the next week they overtrained they didn't listen to their bodies they didn't pay attention to the signs of overtraining and now what happens is you have to take three days off the next week and then you train only two weeks and then um, something else happened and then the next week you like one day a week again uh, and then you go try to make up on the next following week ideally I know that sometimes life uh, gets in the way but ideally what we're looking for is that consistency in training I would say like listen to your body listen to the signs of overtraining um, you know excessive soreness this and that or sometimes it becomes a stress what it was supposed to release your stress now it's creating more stress so my advice is oh, keep a good consistency keep the momentum maybe like three times a week four times a week that's your limit right now see how you're feeling keep that consistency until you can move up so that's respect your progression there's another thing and many white belts many beginners don't respect their own progression I always say that and it's a problem with um, a lot of men males that um have this ego thing first time guy shows up in the room and I'm training on the mats and i tell them hey man just respect your progression relax you don't need to do everything maybe don't grapple right now if you're feeling you know so i give people time to adapt and uh, find what is uh his or hers progression but some guys especially guys girls are not very much like that because i think they become more conscious about that but, some guys don't want to be looked as a, um, you know, a weaker person, a weaker man, or this guy cannot take it, or, and then they try too much right off the bat, and then what they do after is they quit, so, or they stop showing up for a long time, so there goes your consistency, in my opinion is, for instance, I, I had a couple injuries, I'm ramping up now my training, slowly, so I can get to the point where I want instead of going like, okay, now I'm ready, boom. Then I get hurt again. What's the point? There's no consistency in that. I'm not going to be training as much as I want. 
are not going to be developing my unconscious competence. And that could be in firearms, it can be in blades, with training blades, or it can be in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Muay Thai, MMA, in whatever you engage. I had a few people that I would say, do not train at home right now. Stick to what the training and the school. And that person will go uh, to her basement and do like some um, whatever training, get hurt. Doing the training that wasn't really helping, um, say, her MMA career or uh, in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu career or whatever, get hurt, doesn't show up for a long time, comes back to the training and uh, feels that. Well, number one, I cannot push as much as a coach because you have somebody with a he, still healing from a broken hand. And, I mean, that's not really smart training. A person that wants to do a smart training will look into being consistent. And some people are great being consistently inconsistent. It's easier for people to be consistently inconsistent than consistently consistent. So try to be consistently consistent, if that makes sense. The redundancy, uh, it's important, right? So if you engage in any other things, in, but your goal is Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or MMA or Muay Thai or firearms or blades, do whatever you want outside to keep in shape and etc. But that, that won't hurt your training because you're gonna lose the consistency, training not gonna be your way anymore, and you're not gonna develop the unconscious competence, you're not gonna be able to be pushed when you, whenever you're in the room, you're not gonna be able to push yourself or let me, as your instructor, push you. So that's the, main, the message, training is the way. And again, I wanna thank everybody that allowed me to take this five days of training. My, um, my pro the, our professors, our instructors, and et cetera. For me, as a coach, I think it's very important for me, even if it's not related specific to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, although, my training was related to self-defense and combatants with weapons integrated. I think it's it's very important that you guys see that your coach is also investing in his own um, training and being a white belt in something else. Um, last thing I would like to thank the team that made me really, really happy uh, this week. Marcus, one of our black belts, Marcus Borges, he's going to... He uh, will start teaching at the UFC gym in New City, New York. He will be bringing our core Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu curriculum to that facility. Amazing facility. If you live, if you live close to New City uh, in New York, surrounded areas, go there, train with him because he, he has a really, really um, updated um, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, very um, new school and old school. But what made me really, really happy was the fact that when I posted the update on my Facebook about Marcus starting this new career as a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu coach in the city uh, at the UFC gym, the amount of support that we got and congratulations and people that you could tell that legitimately they were so happy for him was overwhelming. And, and that kind of like Blew my mind. I know that we have an amazing team at American Top Team Connecticut, a core Brazilian Jiu Jitsu um, around the country, in Europe, and etc. But it was overwhelming, overwhelmingly. That's my English, sorry. It was amazing. Uh, it wasn't something that nobody, it wasn't about me, it was about Marcus. And I was so happy to see how our teammates how his friends and teammates, how our community, how our tribe, how our, our team was so happy for him. And I think as a whole, the team is growing. It's one more location with another amazing black belt. And um, I just wanna thank you guys for being so supportive, uh, being amazing, amazing people. Um, that's why we have been growing organically, naturally. The school has been growing. The association has been growing. Each individual school has been growing. It's because we have such a immense group of people, good people. And you can tell like how good people uh, we have by those small little uh, uh, actions of 
kindness and, 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 and just love. It's just love. You just love that friend. You just love that teammate, that teacher, because Marcos has been teaching in my school for a while, helping me out. And, um, and I, I just want to say thank you very much, team. So let's have a great week of training. Let's have a, wherever you train, it can be even in other schools if you're just watching this to get some insights and etc. Think about being consistently consistent. Uh, build your unconscious competence, whatever you do, like Bill Raper said. Um, make sure that you um, engage also in meaningful activities, activities that have a lot of meaning for you and it can help other people. Uh, it could be anything in our community, in your community. In my case, my, my engagement right now is helping law enforcement be safer and well-trained. So um, that's my goal right now. And, and everybody else, any civilian as well. So my goal is to also help the military people that come back home and need a place to train or a place to be part of a team, a tribe, a community with the um, something that not similar to the military, but say with the ranking system, with uh, some rules of etiquette, with some structure, with some brotherhood, the camaraderie. So camaraderie, I don't know, it's a really hard word for me to, to say. But uh, that's also my goal, and um, and I think we have been um, achieving great results in those two areas, helping veterans and help the law enforcement. Engage in meaningful, meaningful things, um, help other people, be uh, have love, compassion, and empathy to you know everyone. But be ready. Don't forget, be ready. Be ready because there's some things that are beyond our control. Uh, the world is never going to be 100% peaceful. We have people that are out there just to, you know, harm others for whatever reason, so sociological, psychological, psychiatric, neurological. We don't know. That's why we train. We train so we can protect our loved ones. We train to protect ourselves. And, um, and that's very important as well. If you're into firearms training, uh, Bill Raper from MTAC Shooting, so A-M-T-A-C shooting.com. He does amazing courses, offer amazing courses like responsible armed citizen, um, pistol, uh, integrated combatives with uh, firearms with integrated combatives. Um, so many different courses. And, uh, and also if you're a person that um, into blades and knives and etc., go to amtacblades.com, A-M-T-A-C blades.com. Check out his uh, exclusive, you know, he came up with this whole um, new knife. It's a carry knife for who's uh, into self-defense and etc. Uh, I'm not endorsed. I'm just, he's a really good friend and I love to see him um, doing really, really well um, in his business. And he does a great job because he's an amazing human being, amazing, uh, you know, man as a Christian and also uh, as a uh, a veteran is an American, so the links will be below. Again, have a great week of training. Be positive, be realistic, be vigilant. Um, enjoy your Brazilian Jiu Jitsu journey. Talk to your friends. The more we talk to our friends about our community, the more people will bring um, from your own community to our communities, to our little communities, our little tribes, and our schools. and our teams, the better our teams will become because we'll be bringing always the right people to train with us. And of course, new people, very always very welcome um, because then you see like how amazing, you know, it can be to train with like-minded people. I have a really good blessed week. Um, I'll be back next week. Bye.